Welcome to Mill Spouse Matters, the podcast dedicated to encouraging military spouses. Need some inspiration as you navigate military life, moves, deployments, raising military kids, keeping your marriage together, career issues, and more? Get an encouraging, humorous outlook from a spouse who's been there for 30 years. Join host Jen McDonald, author of You Are Not Alone, encouragement for the heart of a military spouse who knows that we're stronger together. Jen also writes regularly for outlets such as Military Spouse Magazine and has been featured in numerous books and national publications. Grab a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and sit back and relax as Jen talks with military spouses, both new and experienced, who will give you realistic hope and support for your own mill spouse journey. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Mill Spouse Matters. I'm Jen, and I'm so glad to be with you. First off, I just wanted to say thank you for all the notes and emails about what you like about the show and just telling me more about your life. I really enjoy it, and it just gives me so much happiness to hear from you all, as well as on social media. I think my Instagram is probably where the most engagement happens with listeners, so find us there. And on that note, today's guest, Claire Wood, is graciously offering a free copy of her book called Mission Ready Marriage, as well as a free enrollment in the Millspo Gurus Becoming Your Own Guru course, which we'll talk more about. But the way to enter to win either of those will be on the Millspouse Matters Instagram. So just look it up there. So I hope this episode helps you. We're talking about finding your community as a military spouse and all sorts of things. So I think you'll really enjoy it. And I hope wherever in the world you are, things are going great. And I would love to hear from you. Now on to the show. Today, I'm talking to Claire Wood. Claire, along with her husband and their three children, call home anywhere the Army sends them. She's been documenting life on her blog since 2008. These days, she muses about the challenges of living out her faith as a military wife, the importance of goals and reflection, homeschooling her kids, and her love for reading. Claire has contributed to the National Military Family Association, the Millie Journal, and the Military Wife and Mom, and has been a featured guest on Oxygen 365 Stronger Families and the Life Giver podcasts, where she enjoys sharing her message about strengthening military marriages. In 2015, Claire released her book, Mission Ready Marriage, as a resource for other military wives who need hope for navigating this often challenging lifestyle. So welcome, Claire. I'm so glad to be talking with you today. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you as well. Yay. And you guys are Army. And you said we were talking a little bit before we started recording. You've Your husband's been in for how long? We have been on active duty for eight years. So um, in that time, we got in in 2011. First assignment, uh, we were at Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas for three years, Fort Gordon, Georgia for three. We just came off of his captain career course in uh Columbia, South Carolina, which was a short six month assignment. And we've Uh currently been at Fort Polk in Louisiana for the last year. Okay. And you guys have how many kids? We have three. Our oldest is 15. Our middle one is 13 and our youngest is 11. And so your husband is a chaplain so that you had a little bit of a career shift. It sounds like (laughs) we did. We did. So we both, when we married, were public school teachers and, um, but you know, knew that God had a, a specific pastoral calling for our family and, We kind of thought that would be lived out in the local church as, Mm -hmm. you know, vocational ministers in the truest sense of, you know, shepherding a congregation. But after about six years, um, some things kind of just started shifting in our hearts and in our family. And uh, as they say, the rest is history. We transitioned (laughs) to active duty military life and had no clue what that was going to involve. uh, I mean, as if anyone ever does really in any part of life. But um, it's been one grand adventure (laughs) and continues to be. (laughs) Well, and I love the name of your book. And so Mission Ready Marriage. And did you write that as kind of a processing of navigating military life as a new wife? I did. Um, In fact, it really was more of a personal project in reflecting on that whole first assignment. Um, When we got in, I just felt completely lost. Mm -hmm. I did not know where to connect. I did not know where to find my community. And I was desperate for a guidebook or answers or, you know, someone please tell me or show me how to do this and how to do it well. And Mm -hmm. so not that after three years or even eight years, I have any kind of wisdom, but 
it felt like for me a really good tool to process that first assignment would be to just kind of reflect on each of the rites of passage a new military spouse goes through from leaving your home, you know, home of origin, wherever that may be, delving into the new culture of military life, preparing mm-hmm. for deployments, reintegration, which hello, like completely <laughs> took me by surprise, yeah. um, finding friends, finding community, being a mom through that and um, PCSing. So yeah, that was kind of my just personal passion project. But thankfully, um, it has resonated with a lot of, especially new spouses. I bet. Sounds like it'd be a really good gift too. Yeah. So yeah, as always, we'll link to all of this in the show notes on the website. So make sure and click on that. So one of the things when you were a new spouse, so you already had a family. So did you find yourself feeling different from other quote, new military spouses? Or were there other people like you? You know, probably a little bit of both. Um, For us, it felt like we were kind of old getting in when we did. Like most of our peer group, they had been in for a long time already. And so there were a lot of, you know, like there were a lot of people who are already my age that seemed to be thriving and doing (laughs) doing military life well. And so I felt like kind of lost, like I should know at this age, I should already know how to be you know, doing better at what I'm doing here. But I will say that for us, um, my kids were really kind of like a gateway to getting plugged in in a lot of situations. So, um, you know, between homeschool groups and chapel groups and even just within our neighborhood, like it's almost like having a puppy, like you're out walking your dog and you meet somebody else with a dog and you're like, Hey, new best friend. Same with kids. Like, tons of great people we were meeting at parks and playgrounds and everywhere we went. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. I And I did find that as my own kids got older and we were nearing the end of my husband's career, you kind of lose that because you're not, you know, they're older and you're not taking them to school and you're not right. dropping them off at everything. And you kind of lose that little mommy group of instant right. friends and you have to be more purposeful in creating right. your community, which was, that was hard for me at the end. I was yes. like, wait, I have to work at this. <laughs> right. Well, and it's like, you know, my husband, we talk a lot about this because on the one hand, I feel like as the mom and as the dependent, part of my role is every time we move is helping not just get myself acclimated, but really taking on that role to facilitate that for our kids, no matter how old they are and kind of putting them in place in places to find their community. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's kind of like an added responsibility. But then you know, this year we've transitioned away from homeschooling and I have found that in doing that and leaving behind that, that particular community and, um, you know, as they've gotten older and like you say, teenage years where they're not really needing me quote so much, I'm finding that like, I'm lost a little bit, you know, like where is my identity without my role of like caregiver, care, constant caretaker to them. And so, yeah, it's like, one part of military life, like it's always changing it every does. facet. <laughs> and then, and then when your husband gets out, that was weird too. I was, I thought I don't have the voluntold things. I don't have things that are right. set up for me to go to. If I'm going to be friends with somebody, I've got to make it happen. I don't have that instant community when, when he retired, right. that was another, you got to put in the work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we're going to do a whole podcast on that because that is the whole oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> very different. Well, and we had your counterpart from Milspo Gurus, Kelly Artis, back on episode 12, talking about Milspo Gurus. So it's such an amazing thing. And we'll get to that in just a minute. We'll talk about the Enneagram and all of that. But one of the hardest things as a military family is to find community, to find those people right. that you have a lot in common with. Can you talk about a time where that was really a challenge for you? Well, do you have, how long do you have? I mean, just one time, (laughs) you know, I find, yeah, I'm such a relator and someone who so values community and not to, you know, go totally down the Enneagram rabbit trail just yet, but as a six, that's definitely like one of my core, you know, motivations and Mm -hmm. needs. And so I find that every single time we move, this feels like a huge mountain to climb for me. Mm. Um, and so I, it's your I could security just, is to have it is, yeah. it's my security. And like, I totally get my security through my faith and through my marriage and through my children, but there's so much more of who I am that needs friendship that needs the community of work or, you know, volunteer pursuits. And so, um, you know, I wouldn't say I have like one specific time, but I would say, as we continue to move, I just try to be open to the process. I try to be open to 
what is it that this assignment is going to have for me? Will it be an, a season where I'm volunteering heavily in our chapel community or with PWOC? Or is this going to be a time where I seek out like off base stuff? Like I typically find a lot of um, interest in like the local library scene, mm. the local, um, I'm a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution. So I like to volunteer with their patriotic endeavors. And then you know, there have been seasons when I have sought my community and my professional connections. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like you can't ever, or I'm learning that you can't ever expect it to be the same exactly as it was at one assignment at the next. And, and you have so to just be okay with like being open to the possibilities and being patient because it, it's, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And so you have to just take a deep breath and say, okay, what, what's coming here? What am I, what are, what's available to me? How can I be available to who is around me and what is around me? And I found that sometimes I don't realize it until after, you know, we've lived through it, but I can always look back and reflect on the way that was all lining up all along. Mm-hmm. And I was always kind of exactly where I was supposed to be for that season, not just for myself, but for my family and for my community. I think that's so important to give yourself permission that it's okay to mourn that maybe is not exactly like it was and the way you'd prefer, but it can still be just as good. And don't you think too, I I know coming back from overseas, I've had several people comment to me and we've been through this too. The overseas community can be so tight knit and then you come back to the U S and it's just, you don't need each other as much. So you may not find that same energy. And then the other thing too, like you're saying, we were in one place. I think all of my friends were civilians. They were all off base and not connected to the military. And because of the way my husband's job was at the time, it was such a godsend because I could just not have to worry about any of that. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. And that was exactly us. Like our last assignment in Georgia, we lived off post. My husband had what I called banker's hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have convinced me we were civilians again. And yet here at Fort Polk, it's been the absolute opposite. We're on post really for the first time ever living among our people, our military families. And, you know, his job, his op tempo with his job is insane. And so it's like a whole different dynamic. But in Georgia, that's what we needed then. And here in Louisiana, this is what we need now. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of cool the way it always, it always just works out that way. (laughs) And if it's not ideal, someone's leaving at some point, right? (laughs) Either you're moving or your neighbors are moving, right? Yeah, get to try it all again in a few <laughs> months or years. <laughs> well, and I, you talked about being a six on the Enneagram and that that part of that is really needing that community. And so sometimes it's just hard. Like you, you reach is. out, you try, and whatever you're doing is not necessarily working. And right. Some And then especially if you've moved and your spouse is leaving for training or deployment, and that's the person you relate to most, I hope. Right. And you just, you're not finding that community. Let's talk to that spouse today. Like what would you tell them to do or to to even maybe just settle into that? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think there are seasons where it's totally okay to take a step back and focus on maybe learning a little bit about more of what makes you tick and what you really, really need. Because I think one of the things that has perpetually frustrated me in finding that community is I feel like it is so all consuming. It takes all of your physical energy, Mm -hmm. all of your emotional energy. And a lot of times like you're just giving out so much of that and maybe you aren't receiving any of it back that we find ourselves in burnout mode. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves in unwillingness to continue making the effort. And like, we just kind of say, we've moved here. I'm done. Like, I'm just going to watch Netflix and, you know, (laughs) (laughs) pull up in my home and not yeah, forget it. And so I think, you know, maybe if it isn't coming naturally or it's not coming easily, it's okay to say, you know what, maybe this is a season I do need to just spend some time getting to know myself, getting to know what makes me tick. And that way, then you can work smarter and not harder, you know, (laughs) and instead of chasing down every little, well, maybe this is where I should plug in and maybe that, maybe I should volunteer. Maybe you, you start to realize like, no, this is this right here. This can get me, I can be good with this. I can, I can make, you know, and then you're not just expending unnecessary emotional energy yes. chasing something that may, you know, may not, you may not find. Being okay with being alone sometimes. And then, yeah. and I'm always 
I'm always saying you should have in real life friends because those are the people that right. are going to help you if you you know if your kid has to go to the hospital or whatever. But some exactly. some places it's just hard, and it is. Thank God for social media and texting because that can be your lifeline f- through some of those rough patches, and that's okay. It can. And then the other thing I would say to that, and maybe this is kind of like a different side of the same coin. You know, I have had seasons where I have been so down about I'm so lonely and Mm -hmm. I miss these friends and I'm seeing everybody else, you know, their life go on on Facebook or whatever. And, you know, you start to just kind of get a sour attitude about it. And I do think to, to speak to that spouse who may be in that season, one thing that helps me every time is to quit thinking about Claire and to go do something for someone else. That's take a casserole to a new mom on your street call somebody who maybe isn't in the same season of life as you. One of my closest friends here in Louisiana is a young mom who is a decade or more younger than me, but we meet for coffee about once a month. And it's always so refreshing to like check in with her and see what's going on with her or write a letter to a friend from a previous duty station, like kind of get outside of your own self (laughs) and, and turn the focus back to another person. And that always energizes me and makes me feel connected. That's really good advice. And it does taking the focus off yourself. Sometimes you you stop feeling sorry for yourself. It's easy to do, you know, and we're not saying it's not hard. We know that. But, and I think part of what you spoke about was your friends may not look like what they were at other bases, you know, or assignments, or they may not look just like you and be open to friendships of all different types. I remember when we had our first child, one of my best friends, like you were saying, she was a lot older than me and she had five children. On the surface, there was not much we had in common and they ended up being some of our best friends at that duty station. And you just, just be open, I think, to different types of friendships because you can learn so much from people who aren't exactly like you. Absolutely. And I would say too, this has kind of happened naturally. It's not been something that I have sought out, but every single assignment there has been a woman that I, God has placed in my life who has been at least one or two seasons ahead of me in life. Yes. And um, just, you know, again, that could be a whole other episode mm-hmm. of a podcast just on the value of mentorship. And, um, you know, just it, it does me so much good to at least identify one person in each community as we move around mm-hmm. who is who has survived what I'm currently going through, <laughs> whether it's a parenting thing a military kind of career kind of thing, a job thing. Um, and it's just been a sweet blessing that God has allowed that that person to to find me or for me to find her at every assignment. And um, hopefully I am also doing that to someone else too, you know, paying it forward in that kind of mentor mentee role. And those are the people I think you always end up staying in touch with, don't you yes. think? <laughs> oh, totally. Yes, totally. yes, absolutely. I had a friend like that who she, they moved away. We were in Germany and my husband deployed and she was one of the few that checked on me. Like, I'll never forget that. This is years ago. Right. She called me every month from their new duty station in like New Jersey or something. It just meant so much to me. And I think part of it was because she'd been through it, you know, being yeah. overseas and having your, your spouse deployed and she knew what that felt like. And she was never going to let anybody else feel alone during that. And right. so I think sometimes if you're trying to be a good friend, you can just do those little things and it can mean so much. So absolutely kind of comes back to what you said about look outside yourself. So how can you look around you and be that friend to somebody else? There's always going to be somebody else lonely, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is one thing that we've really loved about living on base on post. Um, We're in this little cul-de-sac and it's just, and I don't get out there as much as I was before when I wasn't working. um, But just the the community, our, our little neighborhood, we get together and we'll have little bonfires or nights where everybody's just kind of outside standing around or we'll rent an inflatable for all the little kids. Aww. And um, it's just nice to get out there with people. You don't even have to talk about work or the military, but just knowing that like, these are your people. Yes. They get it. They They've walked, they're, cont- they're walking through the same things you're walking through. And there's just some kind of like special solidarity there, I think. And a lot of people complain about living on base, but it is just such a special thing. Like you're saying, it is. It, it's, it's just such a unique experience. I miss it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was getting to the point where I was like, I'm ready to be done with this. <laughs> I'm yeah. tired of kids running through my yard, but Right. But now I, you know, when you're saying that, it's like, you know, you don't have that really in the civilian community so much. Right. 
Yeah, it's been very beneficial, especially at this assignment, because we're in a very rural location and um, very limited outside activities available within a few hours. Mm -hmm. So having having your people nearby is Yes. Just about, you know, the most important thing. So And I just find that military spouses tend to roll up their sleeves and just jump in and help and they see a need. Yeah. You know, it's just such a unique thing. It really, really is. Yeah. Well, I alluded to Millspo Gurus earlier in your I don't know what to call her, your partner? Your Millspo Gurus partner? We, my, Kelly's <laughs> my friend. Yes, cohort, co-founder, yes. partner. Yeah. However you wanna however you wanna phrase it. So like I said, she was on the show a few episodes back. And I would really encourage listeners to go back and listen to that one because she gives a, a really good overview of the Enneagram and what you guys are doing with Millspo Gurus. But for somebody that doesn't have a clue what is the Enneagram, what would be your Cliff Notes version of <laughs> explaining what that uh, is? <laughs> like, no. Well, absolutely. Yeah. So we have both found that over just the last few years, like it's just had such a renewed focus and popularity, but it's a personality typology that has really been around forever. And um, for those people who may be familiar with things like the Strengths Finder or the Myers-Briggs, those are good tests. Mm -hmm. And we don't uh, diss those or think that they don't have their value. But the Enneagram really gets to the heart of what motivates mm -hmm. you to do what you do. And um, it's kind of like this like way out of, of this house you have built, built for yourself. Yeah. It's the way that you can, you know, start to really understand who you are, why you do what you do. And for me, the thing that I love about it is so many of us get stuck in negative patterns, whether it's thought patterns or behaviors. The Enneagram has been such a useful tool to help shift that yes. and, and, and put yourself kind of on a tra trajectory of staying in levels of health, like mental health, physical, like all health, you know, and kind of like not staying stuck in stress and frustration. Yes. And full disclosure. So I took the Millspell Gurus course. So I'm just going to tell you this. When I had Kelly on and I, I was looking at you guys Instagram and I just kind of would be like, what is this? You know, this is kind of yeah. woo woo, Pokey. voodoo, <laughs> you know, what is, and I really was not necessarily interested until I talked to her. And, and I think that the turning point for me was at the end of my husband's military career, one of the big things that they were doing with spouses groups was the true colors. This was air force, right? which is yeah. great, but it was. And so, so you would do this little test and you'd find out, you know, what are you, but then you kind of, that's just, then you've just defined yourself. There's nothing more. That's it. Right. It's a label. It might help you understand what other people do. It might help you understand what you do, but that's it. And the thing that I really love about the Enneagram, like you said, understanding motivation, but you don't stay there. You, you learn how to get healthier and you learn how to, to interact with you know people in your life instead of just being like, well, they're just a jerk or they're right. so passive or you start to kind of see where it stems from. It's, it's been life altering. Like I can't right? <laughs> overstate. I can't overstate like how it sounds kind of silly when I say it, but it really has, I know. it's like my eyes have just been so opened. So when I did it, so there's nine types and I'll let you talk about this more because you're the expert and I'm just like so excited. But <laughs> I was like, what am I? What am I? And you want to take a quiz right. and figure out what you are. And, and one of the big things they're doing with Millspoke Gurus is taking this typology and helping you apply it to the challenges of military life and seeing right. that's an We'll talk about that in just a minute. But I was convinced I was either, what did I think I was? A six? A six is what you told me in the email. I really thought I was a six. And then I, and then you can get so immersed in it. I was like listening to podcasts, reading books, did their whole course. And I just kept thinking, there's too much of this that it doesn't apply to me. Right. But you know, and so then I, I landed on two, like I've set it all aside so what is this? It's February now when we're recording. So probably on the first of the year, I just kept coming back to the two. Right. And then you kind of reject the parts of it that you don't like. You're like, but that's not who I am. Which and is totally, that's totally a telltale sign that that is probably exactly what your number is. It like makes you annoyed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> surely not. Yeah. <laughs> so I will say one of the best tools that I have found is the sleeping at last podcast where he's doing a song about each type. Right. And then he has, I can't remember his name, Chris, something from the sacred Enneagram comes on Chris and Stewart. helps yeah. descri yes, describe each one. So as we're talking today, the number eight song came out and I was 
geeking out about that because that's what my husband is. So anyway, that was a huge interjection there. But all no, that to say, it's so sorry. it's so useful, and if it, it's not something that's going to be quick, you can't take a quiz and figure out. I, I mean, I don't think you can take a quiz. Well, you're which, you. You can and you can't. I was just going to say, you explaining your process through this is like exactly (laughs) what our take is on this. I mean, of course, there are these little tests and quizzes that different, you know, experts um, have put out. But really, like, you can't take a 54 question test or a 36 question test and really get to the heart of who you are. And Mm -hmm. so we love the approach that you have taken, which is what we recommend. And that's taking some time. Think about it read up on it, listen to some podcasts, talk to some people, take our course and really like, let it sit with you and digest and it will come like that number that you are like, it will start to make itself very obvious Mm -hmm. um, as you continue reading and identifying with different qualities or characteristics of a type. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, there are quizzes out there, but we are definitely in the the camp of this is a discovery tool, not like a Facebook quiz yes. kind of thing. And if somebody's listening and going, well, that's whatever, it's cool, but that sounds long and painful. <laughs> what would be the reason to do that? Like why, why bother, I guess would be something that somebody well, might ask. I would say why bother is why not take the time to really invest in yourself and invest in getting to know yourself and you know, maybe, maybe the person who is just wanting a quiz and just wanting a label isn't really that interested in seeing or making lasting change. But Mm -hmm. like, I think if you're really like serious about even just learning what the Enneagram is, but really tackling like the process of self-discovery, I think you have to be committed to that for the long haul, not just like a five minute quiz. (laughs) That is true. It's really changed my marriage too, honestly. And we've been married for 31 years. I agree. In my case too. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it's given, we, we both say, and, and my husband, he was a little at first kind of like, Oh brother, you know, what is this? Like, why are you talking about this all the time? Why do we have 18 books, you know, on the, <laughs> on our nightstand about the Enneagram, yeah. but the longer, you know, he, I've shared some things for him to read. And of course talked, probably talked his ears off about it, but now he'll come to me and say, well, you know, that's just my one talking oh, that's <laughs> or that's just funny. my, he's, he's a one. And um, yeah, it's just, I say, and I don't mean this, like it's probably going to sound, but I say the Enneagram has helped us to communicate so much more efficiently. Yeah. Not that we just race through conversations and try to avoid talking, but like he can understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. He knows I'm a six and I can appreciate why he feels a certain way as a one or is responding or put so much pressure on himself. It's well, that's part of your, mm-hmm. your oneness mm-hmm. and, um, and not just in marriage, but in friendships and yes. parenting and thinking about my own parents and how I was raised. And, uh, it's just ripple effect it's to the nth so degree. True. My kids are all grown. They're all over 18. So they were the ones that live here got right. interested. And then my daughter that's engaged, her fiance was so into it. I was loving it. And so yeah. my husband was kind of listening to this. I was like, is that that? How do you say that thing again? Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> I pretty much knew right away when I read through the, I don't remember which book it was now, where it gives the list of what, you know, you tend to do this, 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 this. And right. he said, what do you think I am? And I said, I'm pretty sure you're an eight just because I've right. I've known him since I was 17 years old. And so I thought, here's the telling thing about an eight. I was reading it to him and some of it, anybody else would be offended. And he was like, nope, that's me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Of course. Cause that's right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because that's how you should relate to the world. And I was just laughing. I was like, yes, you are an eight. (laughs) Like we don't have to go any further. (laughs) Yeah. That's perfect. Perfect. Well, that's really cool that your daughter and future son-in-law yes. have like already tackled it because I mean truly like what better premarital tool yes. <laughs> than to like really dive deep into your future spouse and you know what makes them tick and how to re- relate and respond and appreciate each other and, and not try to change those things that aren't changeable exactly this is going to save them so much heartache <laughs> on the front end oh of their marriage goodness. right <laughs> so she's a four okay and so you guys have to go read about this. The so fours love uniqueness and are very tend to be artsy. I don't want to be too general, but that's kind of a right. 
anything you read about the four. Right. She did, you know, she says she's a four. So they, he proposed to her over Christmas. So here you will love this, Claire. Right. It was this backyard of a friend with this big, like wooden pavilion. He had it all decorated with lights and plants and like pictures of them. Aww. And then the ring he got her, <laughs> he ordered it from Estonia. Oh, wow. It is a raw diamond with these other two blue stones. There's not another one like it in the world. Well, there you go. That's just perfect. <laughs> and so as he was showing me that, I'm like, oh my gosh, you get her. Like yeah. you you were obviously right for each other because he came and showed us the ring and was and then he made, because he's a woodworker, he made this little wooden box to fit the ring in okay. that's you'll never find anywhere. Right. And it's all very custom and that's awesome. very her. That's awesome. And you didn't say what is his number? He's not sure. Oh, okay. he, he's like going back and forth between, I think, eight, six, and one. He's okay. really struggling to figure it out. Yeah. But I thought even, regardless of that, he totally gets how meaningful that is to her. Right. That, that is very important to her. And I think for – so for me as a two who's very – I don't want to say very emotional. You're in the heart triad. So you very are emotional, much. but you just lead with your heart. And not letting things hurt my feelings as much as like before I just like, well, that was rude or, right. you know, from, from whoever. And just learning like you just because you feel it doesn't make it true. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I knew that. I mean, I'm almost 50. I know these things. Right. But kind of seeing it that other people have been through some of these same things is very helpful. Right. And it's. I'm just saying, I wish I'd had these tools 15 years ago. Right. And and realizing, especially through some really hard deployments and some really hard moves, what I could have done to better take care of myself. Absolutely. Because I'm terrible at self-care. Absolutely. Well, and that's really, I know Kelly, you've talked to Kelly already, but for those who may not have listened to her episode, um, that's really where we kind of came together on this. We are both military spouses um, have a lot of the same ideals about, you know, what this could, what this life can be, how, how to impact others with a positive spin on what can be a very difficult life. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, we both just kept feeling like, well, first of all, we both love the Enneagram. Like we came to that, like completely on our own. And then we started talking about it and we saw that there was a need in our military community to use this tool. Um, because as military spouses, we all tend to share a lot of the same struggles, whether that's in our marriages, communication, um, yeah. relationally with friends and the, the constant cycle of making friends and leaving friends, professional stresses, just the stress of like physically moving all the time. And we found that in our community, like we all keep experiencing, experiencing these things every time we move and so many spouses and service members, but we, we kind of are targeting more spouses, we keep staying stuck in these negative patterns when all of these stresses and all of these pressures come at us. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of where our, uh, our Milspo gurus and our course was, uh, it was kind of born out of that and like wanting other people to like learn about what the Enneagram is, see how it can impact your life and shape your life. But particularly those of us who are military affiliated who have a big burden to carry. <laughs> Yeah. And you have a community, right? We on do. Facebook? Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And so if somebody was looking to find out more about you guys, where where's the best spot for them to go? Millspogurus.com? Yeah, I would say our website. You can read up a little bit on me and Kelly and kind of see what our, our heart is for this. And um, mm-hmm. there's a, a place on there that you can subscribe to our newsletter. So like if you want just kind of some low pressure introductory stuff, we send out a monthly newsletter. There's resources that are free available on the website. Um, and then if you're interested in the course, it's, you know, links right to that there as well. And there's some good stuff on your Instagram too, because I think that was, before I talked to Kelly, I was looking through that because I just, because there are nine types and it can right. seem overwhelming right? and you kind of go, whatever, this is just yet another, like you said, like Myers-Briggs or something like that. Right. But you guys do a really good job on your Instagram of kind of illustrating each of the types. Right. And every type has its strengths and weaknesses. I think exactly. the other thing is too, this is my husband, which one is the right one? Right. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> right. That's what I am. Whatever is the right one. It's like, there's no right one. They're all, it's just different types of people. So how do you, and this may be too big for this conversation, but trying to put all people into nine different types, it just it seems like could be, seem a little artificial. 
Yeah, and I get that. And um, I personally, like with my faith background, I have to be careful to remember that like the Enneagram is not the end all be all. You can't mm-hmm. just like type other people or label other people or have it, even in your mind if you're not doing it, you know, overtly. Like yeah. you can't expect, you know, everybody to kind of like fall into into this, although most people do tend to identify with one of those nine types. I think, you know, if you're open to just learning more about it and putting it into its perspective, it's not going to solve all of life's problems and it's not an answer to everything, but it's just been a fun tool to kind of use and use this kind of a filter over, over life. And I don't know if it's just my age or where I am in my life, but it's just coming a good time to kind of make good changes and, and move in a direction that is um, healthy mentally and emotionally and in my relationships mm-hmm. and um, anything that can do that and be a little fun and, you know, kind of connect you to a larger community, I think is a, a really cool thing. Yes. Well, I have two things to say to that. Number one is if you're finding yourself confused in types and I, I'm going to look for the website, I think it's Enneagram Institute. Does that yes, sound right? That's the test Where? I always recommend. It's a paid test. Well, and it'll show you if there are common ones that get confused. And right. that's where I believe it was the two and the six where I they yeah. had the comparison. And that's what helped me right. figure out which one I was. Right. And then as far as age goes, I think the interesting thing about that is finding out my type and seeing what the pitfalls are of that type and realizing these are things I've been doing for years and I'm so used to them. This is a, a big change I've made because before I will get up in the morning and I will just get right to work or because I work from home. So I'll just jump right into work or I'll do stuff for other people. Or let me guess, <laughs> I was going to say, you got, you start your day by just jumping into what somebody else needs from you. <laughs> yes. And just, and then all of a sudden you look up and it's noon and you're exhausted. And yeah, one of the changes I've made, and I used to do this when I was younger and then, you know, life just happens and we had four kids is getting up and not even necessarily like, I like to have my quiet time and read my Bible in the morning, but just sitting. Right. <laughs> and the first time I did it, I just sat on the couch with my coffee and like made pushed my phone away. Right. I didn't even know what to do with myself. I thought, I can do this for 10 minutes. Come on, Jen. You can do this for yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and now I, just, I bet you crave it and you can't even start your day without it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just so uncomfortable. Right. It's like, but this is so selfish. How can I dare just sit here and do nothing? And other types would be like, what's your problem? But that is you putting your oxygen. That's you putting on your oxygen mask first thing in the morning so you can give and serve and do for others. That's awesome. And so that's like other types would listen to that and think, you're crazy. Like, what's your issue? That's not a problem for me. I don't have any. So it just, it, every type has its unique challenge, I think. Right. So, well, I love what you guys are doing. And there's a course and I don't know the pricing or if it's changing or if um, we actually, that. we actually have um, settled on a new low price, not going to do any like more discounts or coupon codes or anything, but we've actually reduced our price down. Uh, to $49. And so that's kind of its constant, like, that's just what it is. We're not going to have any, you know, that's, that's the lowest rock bottom price we've offered, um, because we want it to be a little more accessible to anyone Mm -hmm. who's interested in taking it. And what's included in that? So I know you do several modules of teaching. Yeah, it's um, about three and a half hours worth of video content broken down into very small bite sized modules, most of them anywhere from, you know, five to eight little minute eight minute little um, chunks or segments. And in the course, there's four modules. The first one is recognized where we, you know, just kind of call out some of the common stress points for military families. The second module is understand. And it's really just an overview of the, the highlights of kind of what the Enneagram is and its history. The third module is identify. There we start talking about the Enneagram based on its three intelligence centers and Again, that's a whole conversation for another, you know, lengthy podcast, but yeah. it's a way to kind of start beginning to think about what your type might be if you don't know it right away. And then and, and then we do break down the nine types in that third module. And then the final module is my favorite, and it's the embrace module, where we kind of like, yes. okay, you still may not be sure, but if you're kind of leaning toward this, here's how we see you taking some steps forward. Um, and moving toward health and moving toward strength in this particular type and kind of putting yourself on a path or a journey toward growth and positivity in your life. That's so good. I'm so 
thankful for you guys doing that. I think it's wonderful. So definitely, if you're listening, you're interested, go check that out. And then are there other books are your most recommended? Yes, absolutely. Well, one other quick thing about the course, in addition to those video modules, we do offer a 17 page download. It's a workbook. It's We've tried to make it as much as possible um, interactive where you can not necessarily interact with us through the course. You can do that through our Facebook community, but you can take time to kind of pause as you go through the course and self-reflect and ask yourself questions and work through questions to kind of help get you ready for the next step. And in in the course, we also give a very lengthy resource list of books we recommend. But just to speak to your question, um, I typically have three recommendations and I, I equate them to a swimming pool. So my first is the zero entry, like you want just a very light overview. I love Suzanne Stabile and Ian Cron's Enneagram book, The Road Back to You. That's just a very yes. like readable, easily understood, easily digestible book. That's my z- yes, I recommend <laughs> my zero too. entry book. And then my just mm-hmm. kind of getting in, but going on out where you can still touch, <laughs> but you're getting a little deeper <laughs> is Chris Hewitt's The Sacred Enneagram. That's actually my number one favorite book. Like if you're only going to read one, that's the one I would recommend. Um, he deals a lot with the spiritual components of the Enneagram. And I love just the way he ties in each of the types to silence, solitude, and just, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just, it's a great book. So, and then my deep end book is Beatrice Chestnut's um, Um, the complete Enneagram. And that is more of like, oh, you want to feel like you have a PhD in the Enneagram. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Because then she's, she talks about wings wings and and subtypes. And I mean, just yes, uh, don't don't start start there. there, But (laughs) if you start to really like the Enneagram, you're going to want to have that book at your disposal, because it is just chock full of like, oh, just nuance. And yeah, it's like you're reading it like, yes, preach Beatrice. Yes. Yes. It's that's so yeah. Good. So those are kind of my three levels of you know wherever you want to dive in. Yeah, I love that analogy. That's really good because I think I I think I went backwards. So. Yeah. <laughs> I I believe I downloaded those all on my Kindle and I did read the road back to you. It was great. And then the other two, I was reading back and forth between them and my brain. Right. Worked. So I've set that during that time where I set right. that aside. I was just like, I've got to just like chill with this for a little bit. <laughs> and then one other resource, if, if you're not like just totally a reader, we have linked on our website. We did kind of like a whole first season of what we called um, Mill Spoke Guru's Convos. And they were basically just recorded Facebook lives that are about 15 minutes long where Kelly and I, I think we had 12 that first season where we talk a little bit about things that each type might be trying to avoid or, you know, some of our favorites in the Enneagram world and why mm-hmm. uh, our identity can somehow be tied to our dignity. Like little just thematic short video, like just to kind of get a, a you know, a little bit of insight if you're not a reader. That's also a great free resource and place to start. And that's on your website? It is. Yes. It's a, a linked across the top under convos. And I just love the f- how you take it and apply it to military spouse life. And that right there is the kicker. If you are interested in this, you need to go to their site, do their course, because it's going to apply so much to what you're living right now. So I highly, highly recommend it. I did the whole, I did the whole course from beginning to end because I didn't want to recommend something that I hadn't done myself. So I really love it. Well, we love your feedback. So thank you for (laughs) taking it and finishing it and uh, speaking highly of it. That really means a lot. I know it is a lot of work for you guys. And I'm just waiting for y'all to start your podcast. Yeah, I know. I know. Just add that to the list. (laughs) I know. Because neither of you guys are busy at all. I can't remember if I talked about this before the show or during the show, but the Sleeping at Last podcast, he's done a song about each type and then goes into explaining each type. And then there are numerous podcasts about the Enneagram and Suzanne Stabile has one. I think hers is my favorite right now. Hers is really Mm -hmm. good. Ann Cron's typology is really good. And I think his Mm -hmm. is a good one to like, if you think you might know your number, pick one or two that he has done with other people who have that number and listen to those. Um, I really like his. And then Kelly probably recommended it too, but we both really like the liturgists. Their oh. overview, they have an overview um, podcast episode just called the Enneagram. And it's no, just a really, it's a really good, um, yeah, introduction and overview. It's lengthy, but um, it's pretty thorough. So that's a good one too. So if you want to completely geek out over this topic, <laughs> this is where you go. Right. Well, 
we could talk about this all day. <laughs> all yeah. Time. I did want to mention your book one more time, Mission Ready Marriage. And Claire has very generously offered a book for a giveaway. So I will have a link to how you can enter that giveaway. She's giving away one copy. So that would be awesome. I think we will also give away a copy of our course. So why don't we do that? We'll do one book and then one um, free enrollment into becoming your own guru on our website. Oh, wonderful. Yay. Look for those links and we'll put it on social media as well and make sure that you guys see how to enter that. So I am so thankful that you came on the podcast today after all the scheduling and finagling and trying to get this done before I leave the country for right. a couple of weeks. Right. Oh, I <laughs> so appreciate schedule. you having me on. This has been just a delight for me to get to, to chat all things military life and Enneagram and always love connecting yes. with another spouse who, who gets it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and go find more from Claire at millspogurus.com at millspogurus on Instagram and Facebook that we will definitely link to how you can enter to win her book or free enrollment in the Millspo Gurus course, which you want to do. Trust me. So thank you so much again. And I really appreciate you coming on, Claire. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye, everybody. Connect with Jen at jenmcdonald.net or on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also purchase her book, You Are Not Alone, Encouragement for the Heart of a Military Spouse at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and other booksellers. Love the show? Don't forget to leave a review on iTunes. Until next time, have a great week.